So I know what you're thinking. There's a dozen videos on YouTube right now telling you about how easy it is to make a faceless AI powered YouTube channel just by letting ChatGPT write you some scripts. And most of them tell you to instruct it to write you short stories because it's the easiest and there's no fact checking involved in fictional stories. But before you run off and do that, it don't. Just don't. AI assisted writing has existed long before ChatGPT. It's really one of the oldest forms of chatbots there is. But ChatGPT? It's not one of those. It's actually horribly optimized for writing you fiction. When it comes to prompting, it's great. And when it comes to outlining works that are longer, it's pretty good. But writing a short story is terrible, and there's really no way to fix it. Yeah, there are books out there that are written by ChatGPT, and you've probably never read them, so you have no idea how good they are, or if they're actually just really terrible. They do exist, though. However, the method employed to get those thoroughly written works is just not going to function when you're trying to write a short story. It's very meticulous, and it takes a lot of time. So honestly, if you're dealing with a short story, you're better off just writing it yourself because you can take more time trying to get ChatGPT to make one for you than if you just wrote it yourself. It's not good for your content farm dreams. But I'll show you an example in case you just don't believe me. The prompt that I used to test this is, on a terraformed Mars, a group of colonists begin experiencing strange phenomena and sightings of an enigmatic Martian ghost. As tensions rise, they must uncover the truth behind these eerie occurrences. See, the prompt is pretty okay. But let's see what output ChatGPT gave. And now this is in the format of a script for a YouTube video. So this is what you would get if you're following the rules of the make your own YouTube channel with things. Introduction, narrator cheerful tone. Hello dear viewers and welcome back to your channel name. Today we have a gripping and mysterious story that takes us to the distant terraform landscape of Mars. I'm your host, your name, and I'll be your guide on this otherworldly journey. Narrator, picture this, a thriving colony of settlers on Mars living in a biodomes and harnessing the planet's resources. Life was challenging, but promising, until strange phenomena began to haunt the colonists. It all started with whispers among the colonists, sightings of something they couldn't explain. A spectral figure that appeared on the Martian horizon, shimmering like a ghostly mirage. As days turned into weeks, tensions grew. Fear and suspicion spread like wildfire within the colony. Who or what was this Martian ghost, and what did it want? As the colony's leaders scrambled to maintain order, a small group of daring explorers decided to uncover the truth. Equipped with cameras, they embarked on a dangerous journey into the Martian wilderness. Deep in the heart of the Martian desert, the explorers stumbled upon ancient Martian ruins, unearthing secrets that could change everything. They also found something else, something they couldn't explain. Their discovery led to a chilling revelation about the Martian ghost and what it meant for the colony. It was a race against time to prevent catastrophe. As we wrap up this captivating tale, the question remains, can colonists uncover the truth behind the Martian ghost and save their colony from impending doom? You'll have to stay tuned for the next episode to find out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss the next thrilling chapter of this Martian mystery. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Until next time, stay curious. Okay, can you see the problem here? It doesn't actually tell the story. It, it's basically just treating the story like a more complicated outline. Now, obviously, it did have the sequel hook, so you didn't get the ending in because it came up with an excuse not to tell it to you. But even what it did tell, it wasn't satisfying at all and didn't... It really was just an outline. You might think that you can just tell it to elaborate more, because I'm sure if you've read anything or watched anything about these write your own chat GPT books, they'll tell you that's what you should do. But you really can't, not in this case. Here's a different example. This one is a detective story. I didn't 
save the prompt, but it's murder on the Orient Express. In this prompt, ChatGPT was instructed to write it kind of like a noir first-person narrative style writing in the hope not only would that help with narration, but also make it not summarize as much. The narrator's name is Eliza Noir. It was a stormy night when I found myself at the platform of the Midnight Express, a train that traversed the darkest corners of the country. I had no idea that this journey would lead me to the heart of a chilling mystery. I boarded the train, my fedora pulled low and my trench coat concealing me from the prying eyes of strangers. Little did I know danger lurked within the luxurious cabins of this midnight voyage. The Midnight Express was no ordinary train. Its cabins were opulent filled with well-dressed passengers, each with their secrets and stories hidden behind closed doors. As I walked the narrow aisles, I couldn't help but notice the diverse cast of characters on this ill-fated journey. My intuition told me that something was amiss, and then in one cabin I found it. A lifeless body, the face frozen in a mask of terror. I knew my journey had taken an unexpected turn. I had to uncover the truth behind this tragedy. As I questioned the passengers, I noticed their nervous glances and whispered conversations. Clues were sparse, but I discovered a cryptic note hidden in the victim's belongings. I eavesdropped on conversations in the dining car, unearthing secrets that would turn the investigation in unexpected directions. And then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I knew who the murderer was. With determination, I confronted the suspect, revealing their sinister motives and the chilling plan they'd hatched. In the end, I gathered all the passengers and unveiled the truth. The tension in the air lifted as justice prevailed, and passengers could finally breathe a sigh of relief. As the Midnight Express rolled into dawn, I stepped off the train, leaving behind a trail of secrets and a story that would linger in the shadows. Again, as you can see, it's... Who it was... Who was the criminal? What happened? What was the clues? How did they discover it? You don't know. It's, it's just an outline. But... I did decide, for the sake of research, to buff it up, to, to, to use the same methods that you would use for a full-length story and make ChatGPT actually work. And here's what the end result was after multiple rounds of trying this. It was a stormy night when I found myself at the platform of the Midnight Express, a train that traversed the darkest corners of the country. I had no idea that this journey would lead me to the heart of a chilling mystery. I boarded the train, my fedora pulled low, and my trench coat concealing me from the prying eyes of strangers. Little did I know, danger lurked within the luxurious cabins of this midnight voyage. The Midnight Express, shrouded in an air of mystery, bore witness to the collision of destinies. In Cabin 7, there was the victim, a Mr. Reginald Thornfield, an enigmatic financier known for his shady dealings. Among the suspects, there was the charming but evasive Lady Eleanor, an heiress with a fortune at stake, Dr. Percival Wainwright, the reserved physician who carried a deep-seated grudge, and Mr. Charles Grimes, a disheveled writer who had more to hide than his ink-stained fingers would suggest. My intuition told me that something was amiss, and then in one cabin, I found it. A lifeless body, the face frozen in a mask of terror. I knew my journey had taken an unexpected turn. I had to uncover the truth behind this tragedy. As I questioned the passengers, I noticed their nervous glances and whispered conversations. The method of the murder, or an unsettling signature. Mr. Thornfield had been poisoned, a vial of deadly toxin cleverly concealed amongst his belongings. Among Thornfield's personal effects, I discovered a cryptic note. It was a curious piece of parchment covered in an intricate web of symbols and phrases, as if it held the key to unraveling his clandestine affairs. It said, The past will always find its reckoning. The debt unpaid shall be your undoing. Seek the hidden ledger beneath the shadowed throne. 
My suspicions grew as I overheard Lady Eleanor and Dr. Percival Wainwright conversing in hushed tones. Lady Eleanor said, Percival, this is a disaster. Thornfield's death brings us no closer to recovering the stolen fortune. And Dr. Percival said, I never wanted it to come to this, Elmore, but he left us no choice. If the truth were to surface... Their voices trembled with unease, and I couldn't help but wonder what stolen fortune they spoke of and how it connected to Thornfield's murder. The cryptic note's words echoed in my mind, and I couldn't ignore the sinister implications. It was clear that there was more to Thornfield's life than met the eye, and the secrets hidden in his note held the key to solving this enigma. And then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I knew who the murderer was. With determination, I confronted the suspect, revealing their sinister motives and the chilling plan they had hatched. It all became clear in the dining car. Under the dim glow of flickering candles, the poison was administered through the victim's evening whiskey, and the motive revealed itself. The killer, none other than Lady Eleanor, had orchestrated the murder to inherit Mr. Thornfield's fortune, a fortune he had swindled from her family years ago. As the authorities led Lady Eleanor away in restraints, I couldn't help but ponder the justice of it all. Her motives were clear, but the senselessness of the crime weighed in my mind. As the midnight express rolled into dawn, I was left with the haunting thought that in this world of shadows and deception, justice sometimes carried a heavy price, and the line between right and wrong blurred like the passing landscape outside. Anyway, it's just not good. I mean, I shouldn't really have to explain how bad it is, but even with the previous context of the complete outline in its history, it still couldn't manage to foreshadow. It couldn't introduce clues that were meaningful, and when it did introduce clues, it failed to follow up on them. What, what, what the heck was that about the note? It didn't mean anything. And Lady Eleanor was clearly colluding with someone else, but only Lady Eleanor got arrested. And then it hit me with a bolt of lightning. Yeah, because she confessed right in front of you, okay? Anyway, this was even it very heavily and clearly leaning on murder in the Orient Express, and it couldn't do it. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that AI cannot write a story. That's just not true. There are bots that will work if you would like for AI to write you a story. One of those bots is Novel AI. It's designed for that kind of thing. It's a weaker bot than GPT overall, but it's fine-tuned for writing, and it adjusts smoothly to any writing style you want. But it still takes effort. Much more than the content farms would have you believe. But said, if you do put in the effort, it's not hot flaming garbage. I'll give you an example. We're going to take that same prompt and put it into Novel AI and see what it gives you. It did not do it in script format, because Novel AI isn't good at that. But here's what it says. The train rumbled across the tracks, rocking back and forth. I'd been on this journey for almost two days, and I couldn't wait to get off and stretch my legs. As I made my way down the aisle, I noticed a woman slumped over in her seat. I knew something was wrong as soon as I saw her. Her face was pale, and she was slumped over like she was sleeping, but there was a strange smell in the air. It was a sickly sweet scent, like rotting flowers. I approached her cautiously, and when I got closer, I could see that she was dead. Her eyes were open, but there was no life left in them. She'd been stabbed multiple times, and the blood had soaked through her clothes and into the seat cushions. I knew I had to solve this crime before the train reached its destination, or the culprit would escape. With only a handful of suspects and a limited amount of time, I knew it would be a race against the clock. I started by talking to the other passengers. One by one, I interviewed each of them and tried to determine who could have done this. I learned that one of them had a grudge against a woman, but he had an alibi. Another passenger said he saw someone else going into her cabin, but he couldn't remember who it was. As I continued my investigation, I noticed something strange. Crime scene? It didn't really match up with most of the murders I'd seen. The stab wounds were messy and irregular, like the killer was in a frenzy. I began to wonder if there was more to this crime than I originally thought. As I continued to dig deeper, I noticed something else. The train conductor had been acting strangely. He seemed nervous and jumpy, like he was hiding something. I confronted him and he confessed that he had been having an affair with a dead woman. He told me she had threatened to expose him and he was afraid he would lose his job, but he swore he hadn't killed her. I was still suspicious, but I didn't have any evidence to prove he was lying. I kept searching for clues and I noticed there was one thing that didn't make sense. 
The train had stopped for a few minutes before continuing on its journey. I thought it was just a routine stop, but then I realized it wasn't. The train had stopped in a small town, and there were only a few people on the platform. I wonder if the murderer had gotten off on the train during that stop and then gotten up back on before it left. As I continued to investigate, I noticed that there was something else that was bothering me. The train was speeding up, like it was trying to outrun something. I realized we were headed towards a tunnel, and that the train was going faster than it should. I tried to get the conductor to stop the train, but he refused. I knew we were in danger, but there was nothing I could do. Just as we reached the tunnel, the train suddenly jerked to a stop. We ran out of track, and we were stuck. As I looked around, I noticed something else. There was a man standing in the shadows. He was wearing a long coat and a hat. I could tell he was the one who had been following us. I realized that he was the killer, and they had planned this whole thing. He had set up the murder to look like a crime of passion, but he had used the train to cover his tracks. He had planned it all out, and he'd fooled me. I looked upon the man and realized that I had been wrong about everything. The crime hadn't been a simple murder, it had been a masterful plan. He'd used the train to get away with the crime, and he'd almost gotten away with it. But I was determined to bring him to justice. As I raced toward the killer, I knew I had to act fast. I tackled him to the ground and held him down until police arrived. He was taken into custody, and I was finally able to rest. And solved the mystery and brought the killer to justice, and I was proud of myself. As the train continued on its journey, I looked out the window as the land escape passed by. I thought about everything I had gone through to solve this case and how lucky I was to have been on the train that day. And I knew that I would always remember this adventure as one of the most important moments of my life. Well, it's not perfect. It There's a lot of stuff that doesn't really make sense. Weird leaps of logic, plot holes just kind of go nowhere, and the ending's pretty rushed. But it is just miles better than the GPT version. And if you were to do more hand-holding, more intricate editing, give it a little more reference, it honestly would probably be very good. You could then take whatever you made out of that, and then take the GPT and turn it into a proper script for a video. That is, if you wanted to. But it's still, it's not one-stop shop. It's many of these content farms, or sorry, channels that tell you to make a content farm. They say that you can make 600 videos in 18 minutes. But even if you consider the fact that it's going to be a little bit longer than that because you're making story videos, it's... This is going to take much longer. A half hour, an hour, two hours per story. And that's before you even get into any of the editing, any of the visuals. Honestly, if you're looking for an easy AI channel, I don't have an answer for that. I'm looking for it myself and haven't found anything, but I don't think stories is the way. It just doesn't jive with the kind of quick AI videos that people are advertising. I think that you could make AI stories, like I said, but considering the fact that if you're doing that, you're making a story channel, then wouldn't you want the very meat of your channel to be well, not flaming hot garbage. Otherwise, even if you were to somehow become successful with that, the best you can really hope for is a bigger and more mainstream YouTuber watching that video and reacting with horror. Unless you try really hard and then maybe you can piss off Jack's films and he'll make an entire channel dedicated to you. Guess that's a goal. Probably not the best one to have though.